Hello friends, Tanya here for Spellbinders and today I am pay playing with the Tiered Tray Collection um, collaboration with Spellbinders and Inking Idaho or Becky Roberts. This is a really cute die and stamp set. It makes this cute tiered tray and there are all of these accessories. The tiered tray decor stamp or die set has lots of options for you to add to this tiered tray. Now I had taken a bunch of the dies and die cut them and did some stamping to create this um, wood grain look on our tray. And I assembled the tray just because I was playing with it and I really liked how it turned out. So I'm sorry I didn't film that part, but it's very simple. There are slits cut in the tray portions that you put the um, center piece in. And there's little feet that you can adhere at the bottom of the lower tray. And there's a little cute finial for the top. And you can assemble all of these different pieces however you choose to. I did want to make a kind of not seasonal. So there is a pumpkin and there's this cute little gnome. But the rest of the components I put on this tray would work any time of the year. Even that flower, you can change the colors. You could make it just a green plant. You could um, take the acorn off. Also, those are very fall themed items, but this has more of a generic feel to it, to me anyway. Nice bold colors. It would work for masculine or feminine. And I am going to make this into a five by seven card. I, of course, love my five set by seven cards. And this tray would work on a smaller card. But I really like how it fills uh, almost the entire card for a five by seven card base. I do some ink blending on this pumpkin. And I use a Copic marker to color the stem brown. And I'm just playing with placement. There are lots of ways you can put these in here. And I don't actually use the layout I start playing with here, but look at all of the ways you can tuck these items in together. It is a genius the way they created this tiered tray. I know lots of people like to decorate with tiered trays, I don't do any decorating with my tiered trays. I do have a tiered basket that I keep my fresh produce in. I've got like ginger, uh, fresh ginger root in the top. And then in the middle, I generally have some kind of citrus. And in the bottom, I have bananas, maybe apples, whatever fruit I have that's going to be eaten fresh and doesn't require refrigeration. I love my tiered baskets. I maybe should look at doing a little decoration. Now my cards, I'm always about making it pretty. In general, in my house, I'm more about function over pretty, but that's partly because I live in an unfinished house and I have for like 30 years. <laughs> and, and someday we're actually going to finish the house. <laughs> that's okay. We all have things we'd like to improve in our homes. And yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> but paper, paper is a lot easier to remodel. <laughs> Here I've got the center. No, I've got the acorn, the acorn and the center for the flower. Those pieces all cut on the same die cut and they come together really easily. We've got our cute little gnome. There's a base for the gnome and a die that cuts the feet, the nose and the beard. And that makes this really easy to layer. I did die cut the body of the gnome from some yellow cardstock, the same yellow cardstock I used for the flower. And I decided to add color to the hat and the clothes with uh, ink blending. And I have wild honey and is this chipped sapphire, I think, or faded jeans. It might be faded jeans. And I used just a piece of scrap cardstock to a little bit mask off the hat while I was blending the pants. Now the beard, I did take my brown blending brush and just add a little definition to the outer edges and we'll adhere this directly to our gnome base. And you will see on the die cut image, there are some embossed lines that help you place all of the different pieces onto our cute little gnome. I did save the little white 
piece that cut out the gnome's nose so I could make that flush. And then I'm going to add the one that I colored with a Copic marker over the top of that. So it's a little, uh, has a little more height than the beard. Now the feet I actually cut out from some brown cardstock and I'm adding those to our cute little gnome in the embossed areas that show us where they need to go. And there he is. I think he's adorable. You could use all kinds of ways to fix uh, to decorate that one. Here we have, now I don't remember the name of this. I will have it linked in the description box below, but this is one of the uh, hot foiling plates and you can see these black marks that I created on the back of our foiling plate. And these line up with the center dots in the diamonds that I would need to line it up to make a continuous pattern. I have been successful in lining this up without the black marks, but I thought this was a great tip and it worked really well on my last video for a different uh, hot foiling plate. And look at that, nearly flawless, just a little tiny bit off, but I don't think you'd ever notice. We're going to take an older die set called Deco Bloom and this is sized for a seven or five by seven cards. And I'm using several dies from this. I use the largest to die, the detailed die with the largest die and then the smaller layering die that goes on the inside and I die cut all of those. I used a black cardstock, a shimmery gold cardstock like the brushed gold from the Spellbinder shop and, um, and then I also die cut from the glimmer hot foiled piece that I created. And I had foiled um, a white piece of cardstock with the opal cards, uh, excuse me, opal foil. There we go. And I just wanted something that would mimic like a backsplash, a tiled backsplash. And I think this was perfect. It's very subtle. Um, you can see it in real life much better than you can on the video, but it just adds that extra detail so it isn't just a plain white background behind our tray. Just going to center that nicely right in here. I love these die sets that were that are five by seven sized. I don't know if they're all available. I will find links for any that I can find. I'm pretty sure that I have seen this one in the Spellbinder shop yet. Now I decided I need a little extra gold added to that finial, so I die cut that from some miracle mirror gold cardstock. And you can see that I've added some dimension behind our tray. Now I went a little overboard. You'll see when I try to tuck all my elements in, I should have not put any behind the most forward parts of the tray because it gets in the way when I'm trying to tuck things in. This top tier wasn't as much of a problem as the bottom tier. You're gonna see me add all of these pieces and I left this in because sometimes watching someone assemble all of the bits onto your card is what you really need to see. I'm going to add two cups on the top here and I'm trying to add enough separation between the different colors. So um, I do try to make sure that the yellow flower and the yellow cup aren't right next to each other. I'm adding little bits of coaster blank and cardstock scraps behind the different pieces to make them flush with the background and the raised tear tray. Yeah, tear tray. Here I'm debating how much of that center post I want to cover, I'm trying to keep it not hidden. I mean, I did create it. I wouldn't want it to hide. This cutting board is adorable. And there is a sentiment set that goes with this collection. And several of the sentiments fit right on that cutting board. So if you wanted to add one on there, you sure certainly could. I chose to just use the um, letter board to do our sentiment, which there is a hello die that fits perfectly on our letter board. I'm adding some dimension behind that. And that little gnome is going to sit right in the middle of the lower tray on our card base here. 
I think that's adorable. And then I just have to find a good spot for that acorn. And you know what? It covers that gap next to the letter board perfectly. So we're going to add a little dot of glue and put that right on the letter board. So cute. That's the whole front of our card. I decided that looked great. And here's that tiered tray sentiments stamp set. There are 16 stamps in this stamp set and lots of different sentiments. Some of them are fall related. Some of them could be Christmas themed. I am using a more generic one. This one just says, um, wishing you a beautiful day pretty sure that's what it says. I love the mix of fonts on this stamp set. It's so sweet. I really think it would be a great stamp set for all kinds of things. It wouldn't have to just be for this tiered one. All right, for card number two, my last video, I created a card using these Geo Snowflakes. And this is a scrap from the tag that I made. I decided I really wanted to make a snowflake themed warm wishes type card. And I'm pulling in the all of the same elements that I used before, only this time, I'm just going to use that bottom tray. That's all I'm going to use from the tiered tray. And then we're going to use the pitcher and the mugs from the tiered tray decor die set. And I die cut that, I die cut those from that scrap. Next, we're going to take this, these two dies from Winter Borders. This came out think in August or September. And I'm using the snowflake die and this little curved and pierced die. And then one of my favorite new embossing folders, this is called Ski Lodge. It is so cute. Um, and I had uh, already heat embossed, excuse me, not heat embossed. That, excuse me, that sentiment was from Glitter Wishes. And I I foiled that with the matte gold on some navy cardstock. Just turned out gorgeous. I've die cut the snowflakes border in some glitter cardstock, and I'm using some, uh, I think this is score tape in the 1 8 inch width, and I pushed down very firmly to get it to adhere well to the glitter cardstock. Glitter cardstock can be a little tough to glue together with other things. And I use that to adhere our white uh, wavy background, curved background. To me, this looks like a really decorative uh, tablecloth. Just think that's beautiful. And to make these two layers even with each other, I'm adding a scrap of cardstock so that it's all one height. And we're going to trim that off. This makes a six inch long border. So this would cover an A2 card perfectly and it will work very nicely across the front of a portrait style um, 5 by 7 card. And we're doing another 5 by 7 card because I just, I just love them. This has a very monochromatic background and it is probably not everyone's taste. However, I was going for a very frosty look. I wanted this to look like a pitcher of nice warm beverage set up for guests for a cozy little chat. And I like that this looks like one of those trays you would carry into your living room or out onto the patio or next to a hot tub. I don't have a hot tub. I kind of wish I did. <laughs> and it has two cups of hot beverage with our cute little pitcher. I love how that prism hot foiling glows on our ink blended backgrounds that are, excuse me, ink, ink blended pitcher and cups gorgeous. And this cardstock that I used for the Glimmer Hot Foiling is from one of the card kits. And it's a navy cardstock. And it foils just, oh, it's delicious. I love this. Now I'm playing around with the placement of the sentiment. And I, if I had this card to do again, I probably would put some flowers, like some poinsettias or some greenery, something, uh, maybe not even green, but some extra stuff 
just stuff. Because as much texture and layering as there is going on in this card, it's a lot of white space for me. Maybe I would have put a border. Ooh, now that would have been good. Some kind of border like I did on that first card. Let me... Let me know what you think. How would you have done this card a little differently since it is very stark? Now, the clean and simple among you would love this, I imagine. There's just so much white space going on. I thought it would be enough with all of that texture and maybe I'm just being overcritical. <laughs> We're going to add a little bit of dimension behind this sentiment and I do end up ultimately overlapping the um, tail here with the picture because I needed more balance on the upper portion of this card. Just going to add a little glue to that and place that. I do use my grid mat to help make sure I am making this straight and the embossing on the back of that or on the background helps also. I took another sentiment from that glitter wishes Glimmer foil set. There are so many amazing sentiments in that. You, I, if you like glimmer sentiments, you've got to get it. Oh my gosh. Then I'm going to take a couple of stamps from the tiered tray sentiment stamp set. And I'm going to stamp this heart in the salvage patina distress oxide right above our sentiment. And then I wanted a little more fitting... Um, sentiment for the inside. So I took another one from that stamp set and it says home is not a place, it's a feeling. And that just fit with that whole cozy sentiment. Here are my two projects for this video. Let me know which one you enjoyed the most. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I do read all of the comments. I just don't have time to respond to them. Just know that I really appreciate hearing from you. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, check that description box below. And until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.